the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I have prepared for VBS this week, I have been thinking a lot about stories. Before reflecting on storytelling as a vital part of the human experience in the Christian faith, let me first define VBS. In the late 1800s, a Sunday school teacher created Vacation Bible School to provide a safe environment for children to learn about the Bible and be fed spiritually and physically. St. Paul's will stand in this great tradition as we offer five half days of programming in which the children from this church and the community will learn the stories of our faith and explore how we are all linked by love. I love VBS because I love stories. Storytelling is a universal human practice. The art of storytelling has weathered the test of time because it has helped our ancestors and continues to help us make meaning of our lives and helps give us a lens of hope as we move into an uncertain future. Unlike bare bone facts or statements that can be dry and forgettable, stories put flesh on the bones of the human experience. For example, it is one thing to say Jesus is Lord. It is entirely different to hear the story of Jesus, to hear the story of the God-man who could calm a storm, conquered death and the grave, and sent the Holy Spirit, which is here to comfort us now as we come together in this place. Bible stories are sacred because they form us as the people of God. They link us together and help us name how God's love is moving throughout the world. Things become tricky and even dangerous when the amplified stories are life-taking instead of life-giving. After yesterday's events, we are aware of what happens when narratives of confusion and disillusion are allowed to chronicle our lives. In my original draft of this sermon, I was going to share what was intended to be a humorous antidote of how, because of miscommunication, Father Stephen was under the impression that I was going to tell today's gospel story as a godly play story in VBS. And his compounded co confusion over my confusion for why he thought it was a bad idea. I intended to share that an antidote to illustrate how the stories we tell matter and the power that they have to change our perception. However, yesterday served as a sobering example that we cannot ignore. We have examples over examples of what happens when stories of violence and hate take root in people's lives. The results are always the same, which is the self-destructive, death-dealing cycle of dehumanization and othering. Because stories are powerful, it is essential that we never stop telling the stories that can give us peace that passes all understanding. In continuing to tell our stories, we are able to decipher the difference between the stories that invite us into God's love and the stories of mammon, oppression, and hate. When we fall prey to those stories whose heroes are celebrated for killing, stealing, and destroying those who take advantage of the marginalized and those who hoard resources and consolidate power, we will inevitably pattern our lives after their example. King Herod was one such person who was formed by those kinds of stories. In contrast to the Jewish God who called the landless, childless, and powerless to be God's people, a God who demanded mercy and justice, a God who was for humanity, Herod's gods were a warring pantheon who could be 
bent to the whimsy of mortals, bestowed glory on those who conquered and controlled others. Herod was not of Jewish descent. However, like the kings of Israel and Judah before him, God sent a prophet, John the Baptist, to chasten and redeem Herod, to invite him into a narrative where his self-worth was not contingent on political power, but on God's love for him. However, speaking truth always comes with a risk, and John took that risk resulting in imprisonment. While Herod was angered by John's prophetic message, we are given a sense that his anger was birthed out of conviction. Scripture even notes that Herod liked to listen to John. Who knows? If Herod had, allow had not allowed the narratives of, the of power and the anxiety that he would lose his eroding foothold as a puppet king, he may have repented, but he did not, and he had John executed. But this story is not just a cautionary tale of what happens when we let narratives that are antithetical to the gospel script our lives. This story is also about how God's story of love can empower us to persevere even when our world feels out of control. This story is about those who clung to the stories of their faith and were able to stand steadfast in the face of great trials. And as is such with stories about those who faithfully labored for God's peaceful kingdom, their story of quiet obedience and profound courage could be easily glossed over. But not for the gospel writer of Mark which tells us that when John's disciples heard about his execution, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. John the Baptist risked everything for the sake of the gospel, and John's disciples were willing to take on that same risk. For it was an act of great defiance against Herod to claim the body of John. John's di disciples found the courage and strength to honor their teacher because of their shared story. Their story told them that this was not the first time that a prophet was killed for standing against injustices. Their story gave them the courage to trust that the God who did not forsake their ancestors would not forsake them now. Their story gave them hope that God would keep God's promises and that the Messiah that John had prepared the way for would establish a kingdom of peace. We are reminded the story of the people of God has the power to form and transform lives. It has the power to give us hope, and it gives us the power to stand up for what is right in the face of terror. And I know it may sound a little silly, but it is the truth. This is why I love Vacation Bible School. In a world that seems to give the bullhorn to storytellers who want us to believe that hate will prevail and oppression will win, we have the opportunity to tell a different story. And not just for one day a week, but five days. For five days, we will have the honor to tell our children the best story of all. A story of a God who will never leave or forsake them. A God whose kingdom has more power than the political powers of this age. And a God who will give us strength and courage to be like John the Baptist and his disciples. To be truth tellers and reconcilers in a hurting and broken world. So as you pray for this world and this nation throughout the week, praise for those of us who will be at Vacation Bible School and the work that we will be doing. Know that we won't tell stories, sing songs, explore the meaning of our liturgy, do service projects and make crafts just for the sake of it. We will do all those things to explore 
wonder, muse, and wrestle with our story as the people of God. A story that teaches us what it means to be linked by love to God and each other. A story that has the power to change the world. Amen.